yeah, just get it out. Get it, you know, when you're stuck in your own mind, it's that's the worst place to be sometimes. And and you know, someone can look at your experiences from a different perspective and maybe enlighten you, like, oh yeah, that's true. I did do that and I did earn that. And I, you just never know what someone else is gonna offer. So today I'm excited for our conversation um, because it's kind of a big one. We talk about it a lot internally and kind of everywhere, I guess. And it's imposter syndrome in the creative space. So I guess I wanted to start by kind of bringing that up. And yeah, how, how would you define that for yourself? What has your experience been with that? Yeah, I think, you know, imposter syndrome is pretty common in the creative space. And I think it's pretty common for most people. You know, the root of it is you just kind of feel like a phony. You uh, don't quite know if you're deserving or worked hard enough to get it. Friends, your family can tell you how great you are. It's your internal beliefs, whether you think you're deserving of the recognition. No amount of appreciation for your work really helps. It's almost like a form of depression as an artist, as a creative. And I think, you know, we at yeah, PicSight have built a really great place where, you know, we build each other up and, and we do as much as we can to promote each other. And, you know, in my experience, I've worked really hard to get to where I'm at. There's a lot of late nights with freelance, a lot of late nights at PicSight, you know, launching new apps. But there's always that lingering, did I really earn it? Did I really work hard enough for this? You know, as someone who, didn't go the traditional college route, um, you know, got connected to the pick side and, you know, I, I felt like I did, I earned it, but there's a lot of times when you're working with other creatives and other individuals that have, you know, masters, bachelors, you're like, okay, I feel like they did more, <laughs> but that doing more doesn't necessarily mean that they're better than you or you're lesser than them. It's understanding that you bring your own individual voice and that it's a different perspective than anyone else and understand that your perspective is valued and it's worth something and the work you've put into it is worth something. It's still to this day is a, did I earn this? You know, am I the best person for this? Imposter syndrome is an interesting driver also. It can lead to pushing yourself to get better, to learn more. And I think that's, that's the positive side, the silver lining of imposter syndrome is you can use it as a true motivator to get better. Imposter syndrome isn't necessarily a bad thing. In some ways it keeps you grounded, but to always make sure you're looking at it from the positive side. Uh, that's the healthiest way to deal with it. Yeah, no, that, that totally makes sense to me. That sort of conflict between the internal and the external validation, like all this stuff might be coming in, but internally you're not accepting it because you have these different framework of what it means. It sounds like you see that balance of like maybe considering it as a force for good to like push you forward. I mean, do you have advice for people to where maybe it's more of like on the other end of that, where it's a little more like crippling or anxiety focused and finding more of a balance to make it a healthier part of their lives? <laughs> you know, what's helped is talking about it. It's not easy to do. And if you don't have a support system or you don't think you have a support system, that's, you know, it's, it's hard to do. Uh, it's finding like-minded individuals that you just share those experiences with and see if they've earned the same thing. I don't think I've ever met someone who at least once in their life felt like they didn't deserve it or didn't earn it. I, I, that's the only thing I can get to is, is talk about it. You know, thinking about it and not sharing is, I mean, the most personality, social stuff with anxieties, it, uh, it really helps to talk. You know, get sometimes it. people, yeah, just get it out. Get it, you know, when you're stuck in your own mind, it's, that's the worst place to be sometimes. And, <laughs> And, you know, someone can look at your experiences from a different perspective and maybe enlighten you like, oh, yeah, that's true. I did do that and I did earn that. And I did, uh, it, you just never know what someone else is going to offer for you in, in a conversation. Yeah. And even what you're offering them, because maybe they're going to have a me too moment and you can kind of like give and take there as well. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, they may not realize they actually need to share the same kind of story. Yeah. It's not math where you can say, well, that's wrong. You know, so it's so much more personal in terms of how we judge things and how we judge ourselves. Cause mm -hmm. we, you know, you can believe someone who says that your work sucks and you know, what does that mean? You know, it's so much more ambiguous. So hey. um, definitely need to have those conversations more in the creative space. Probably. Mm -hmm. As a teacher, as, as an, as an educator, um, as, as a writer, what is your experience in that with the imposter syndrome? Yeah, it's kind of a wild thing. Um, I was having this conversation with someone and I kind of talked about how artists temperaments kind of, we just kind of swing, you know, mm -hmm. like one day you're like, I'm so amazing. And then the next day you're, you just want to like burn everything. I've done like the thing where you like crumple things and throw it and then you regret it. So I don't, that's probably somewhat related to imposter syndrome, just like, cause it's all tied into, you know, self worth or insecurity or, how you're relating at that moment to yourself and to 
your art, which is coming from yourself. As a teacher, you know, you're trying to tailor things to students and you, you've got this education of how to teach and then you get in and it just doesn't work for all the kids. So then you feel like, do I know what I'm doing? You know, because <laughs> like, like this kid isn't responding to this thing in the textbook. So there's, you know, there's that. And there's a lot of creativity that goes into teaching because you're, you're trying to come up with ways that resonate with different learning styles and kids who have different amounts of background knowledge or whatever. So yeah, so there's always like a little bit of like, what am I doing? Is everybody feeling like, you know, overwhelmed sometimes and uh, the answer I think is yes <laughs> part of it's just being human right just like how your external life is relating to your internal life and how well that's matching and like you said using that to feel yourself forward and say no I can do this and I'm, I'm actually doing a good job and I think that does come from conversations around you <laughs> mm -hmm. no I think so it's funny as you talk about looking at past work uh it's like so you view this as, as an, a sign of imposter syndrome where my Instagram account is probably my portfolio. And I go back, kind of scroll through things for like, oh, I, I posted that. But like, what is that? Or is is that as I do is that viewed as a as imposter syndrome or is that just the general creative All right. always being judgmental of their own work? <laughs> do you have that experience? Oh no, yeah. Oh yeah. You just go back and read something you wrote, and you're like, oh, <laughs> this sounded so beautiful. <laughs> So is that just growth as a, as, you know, I think you just realize you've gotten better. Yeah, I think distance, distance is, I guess if we're just talking about like looking back on your art. Yeah, I think, well, I don't know. Cause I also think that like, if you, if it's just like the next day and you're regretting it and I don't know, maybe in the design world, this is different, but you might want to sit on it a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you might change your mind again but also i think i think it's nice to look back and see progress yeah that, that's there's the compare natural comparison that some that's can be beneficial like oh yeah that's i'm much better than I, where i was five years ago in terms of x there's yeah i mean for me i've, I've, I've had moments where i think this had this has to do with imposter syndrome it's like oh i was so much better at that then or and, and to look back on those experiences like why do i think that it's well, maybe I had more time to focus strictly on that project. Yeah. Plus distractions. Have you ever looked back and thought like, oh, that was better than, <laughs> or I, I don't know. Yeah, even even things like paper, like old papers I wrote where I'm like, oh, I knew a lot about this topic. You know, like, I don't remember any of this. Yeah, you're like, oh, I don't, I don't know if I could exactly reproduce this. Do you look back and say, oh, this is too crowded? Like, is it the same kind of thing where you have like new parameters that you have a sense of? Or is it just like the whole vibe is off? <laughs> it definitely goes both. It, it, both of those could be an, an option. And, and I don't necessarily look back on things and say, oh, I was so much better then. It's yeah. like, oh, that was me then. And this is me now. Right, right. It's like, this is like, uh, you know, your blue era or what is that called? Yeah. <laughs> but like, you know, even like what's sort of out there and being affirmed at this moment. And then you look back later and you're like, this looks dumb, but it's kind of like what everyone was kind of, it was like the trend. It was, yeah. I mean, that, especially visual design, there's definite, definite trends that exist. And yeah, I think I can go through my portfolio <laughs> and be like, oh, there was that trend for sure. I definitely tried that, you know, the flat design, the schemorphic, the right. whatever it was, it was the thing to, to, to be creating. And I, I think that's another thing too, is not being, relying on trends to inspire your creativity. I think it's a, that's a sign of growth is when you're letting your aesthetic dominate what you create and you're not letting you know, trends kind of define it. Maybe you let it inspire, but you don't let it define it. Which that is kind of transcending imposter syndrome a little bit. Cause you're kind of saying like, what I am doing is, is like more worthwhile than like listening to all these voices. So you're kind of trusting yourself a little bit more there. Yeah, I think that's that's the growth phase of you know yeah. coming out of imposter syndrome. If you can, it's it's realizing you're again, it's realizing your value, what you brought to it. Um, cool. Well, thank you for chatting. Absolutely. <laughs>